And I now call Anil Bebby to speak to and to move Amendment 7787.2, around 10 minutes or so, Mr Bebby. Thank you, President Officer. I want to start this afternoon by making clear Scottish Labour's commitment to improving the quality of life for people with learning disabilities. And for that reason, we welcome the debate this afternoon and the opportunity to examine how best we act to turn that aim into reality. As the Minister has said, the previous strategy, the same as you introduced in 2000 by the Labour-led uh, Executive, has been hugely influential in changing attitudes and increasing support for people with learning disabilities. We therefore welcome the fact that the underlying principles of that strategy are reflected in the Government's Keys to Life publication. As I said before in this chamber, we will support the Government where we agree and believe they are doing things right, but obviously point to areas where we believe they could and should be doing more. As the Government uh, refreshingly acknowledges in the motion, there is uh, more to do and we need to work across party lines to achieve that. We know from the most recent statistics that there are more than 26,000 adults and 16,000 children and young people with learning disabilities who require support. According to the Learning Disability Alliance Scotland, these people want three main things, a secure and safe place to stay, meaningful things to do with their time and friends and family to have in their life. I don't think anyone across this chamber would argue when I say these are things that everybody wants and things that should not be too much to ask for. Our challenge, therefore, is to make sure that adequate support is provided to those who need it to allow them to fulfil these aims. So we welcome the publication of the new strategy and support to drive to deliver better outcomes for people with learning disabilities, as well as their families and carers in the areas of life that they say are the most important to them. However, there are considerable challenges that need to be addressed if we are to ensure this doesn't simply fall into the trap of being, becoming another strategy that sounds good on paper, but in reality has little impact on the ground. Rhetoric must be turned into reality if this strategy is to be de deemed a success. Organisations like the Learning Disability Alliance Scotland have expressed reservations about the lack of an overarching theme to the strategy, which we must take heed of. As I'm sure many members have discovered for themselves in the last few days, the keys for life is a lengthy strategy stretching to over 170 pages and detailing 52 separate recommendations. Although the strategy declares a human rights focus, we need to make sure that people with learning disabilities are at the centre of the improvement to the quality of their lives. In other words, presiding officer, we need to make sure we are working with people rather than talking at people. We must also look at some of the challenges outside of the strategy itself, which will undoubtedly have an impact on its success. It is essential that the Scottish Government takes action to ensure that we have a fair, consistent and transparent system of care for disabled people established across Scotland. Resources continue to pre present a huge challenge to delivery of support services. Local authorities of all colours are struggling with the pressures of delivering services in the face of vastly reduced budgets. As a result, we have seen a sharp increase in the use of care charges. Some authorities are charging as much as 100% well, 25 of the 32 local authority areas charge a rate higher than the top rate of income tax. I know in my own area, the previous administration of Renfrewshire Council introduced charges um, for transport to, uh, for people with learning disabilities to daycare centres. This has now thankfully been reversed, but it did have a serious impact on a large number of vulnerable people within the community and emphasises the need for a consistent approach right across the country that places the needs of people with a disability or learning disability at the centre. I agree with the strategy when it states that the key to delivering effective services is to ensure that people are provided with the outcomes that they need at the right time and in the right place. We know a range of public bodies are involved in delivering services that people with learning disabilities need. We should of course be encouraging local authorities, health boards and colleges for example, to work together to achieve the kind of joined up approach that benefits people. But we should also be encouraging public bodies to do this in conjunction with people uh, with learning disabilities. As Inclusion Scotland said prior to this... Yes, certainly. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, I'm very much in tune with uh, what the member says and about uh, the needs of people with learning disabilities. Will he also agree, however, that it's important that those who have learning disabilities actually have choice as well as other people simply deciding what their needs are. I expect them to be able to agree. Neil Bebe. I, 
I think, um, I th I think as I've, I've been saying and we'll go on to say, I think um, that, you know, that people with learning disabilities should be um, involved and consulted on, on, on their services. And I think that's a, a crucial uh, point. And, and the, um, this should be, you know, the approach to, to joined up services should be done in conjunction with people with learning disabilities. And as Inclusion Scotland said prior to this debate, if learning uh, disabled people are to be at the heart of the commissioning process, then they must be involved in it. Um, so I think that makes uh, Stuart Stevenson's point there. Uh, Presiding officer, adults with learning disabilities should have the opportunity to learn at college. This opportunity, unfortunately, has been taken away from hundreds of people in Scotland. The Scottish Consortium for Learning Disability published a report in August which estimated that around just 9% of people with learning disabilities attended further education colleges in 2012. That's a fall of nearly 300 people compared with the previous year, down from 2,696 to 2,407. It's clear there are significantly fewer courses for people with learning disabilities than there were just a few years ago. This is just one of the elements of the human cost this government's cuts to colleges are having. A Scottish Consortium for Learning Disability study from last year showed that there had been a 34% cut in part-time places for students with learning disabilities from 2,155 to 1,413. In addition, figures from the same organisation for 2012 show that the number of adults with learning disabilities who attend college for two and a half days or less per week is down 20% on 2011. No surprise when you consider the drastic reduction in the number of part-time courses. And it's not just the Scottish Consortium for Learning Disability. A 2012 survey of Scotland's colleges by Enable Scotland found that courses for people with additional support needs have been halved since 2007, with a 46% cut in the last two years and a 42% cut in the last year. And the number of staff teaching people with additional support needs has been cut by 16% in the last two years. The Scottish Government's strategy paper suggests that people with learning disabilities should be included in mainstream further education classes. The argument is made that it would give them greater access to award-bearing courses and improve employment prospects. However, what this fails to acknowledge is that, that these people are with additional support needs. While some may be able to cope with mainstream classes and benefit from the opportunity, there are others for whom mainstream classes would be a route to failure, lowering self-esteem and perhaps causing further retreat from mainstream life. So any efforts to encourage people with learning disabilities into mainstream classes must be matched with a commitment to provide them with the additional support they need. Otherwise, the disproportionate impact that college cuts have had on people with additional support needs will only get worse. It's clear that people with learning disabilities are suffering as a result of the Scottish Government's decisions to slash college budgets. People with learning disabilities are not getting the opportunity and specialist assistance to learn. And as a result of that, the Scottish Government is preventing them from accessing skills and qualifications they may need to get and hold down a job. It's concerning that um, the Minister mentioned employment figures earlier. It is concerning that figures show an increase in the number of adults with learning disabilities are failing to secure employment. In 2012, 3,393 adults were recorded as employment or training for employment. This is just 13 per cent of all adults with learning disabilities known to local authorities and represents a decrease of 653, that's 16 per cent compared to 2011. Meanwhile, 55 per cent are neither in employment or training for employment. Is it any wonder if we are cutting their college courses? We should obviously commend the good work that organisations to do to help with supported employment and we should encourage more such initiatives, but we are undermining that with the approach to colleges. And one final thing I would say, presiding officer, um, can I say that I believe the high proportion of people with learning disabilities and learning disabilities affected, uh, are affected by the bedroom tax and other iniquitous welfare reforms it means it is essential the Scottish Government use their powers to act to negate the bedroom tax. Jackie Bailey was right when she said a UK Labour Government would reverse the bedroom tax. And as we speak, Ed Miliband will be reaffirming uh, that commitment. The Scottish Government has already found £20 million and it should commit to finding the other £30 million. There is nothing outlined in next year's budget to support the vulnerable individuals and families affected as John Swinney keeps people on the hook before next year's referendum. 
They should, the Scottish Government should also support our plans to legislate to prevent evictions as a result of the bedroom tax. The people affected, the people we are here to represent, need and deserve action from the Scottish Government. President Officer, Scottish Labour welcomes the publication of the Keys to Life strategy paper. We are pleased it maintains the underlying principles of the previous strategy and, of course, supports its aim to improve the lives of people with learning disabilities. However, for people with learning disabilities to see and genuinely benefit, and we need more than a strategy that simply sounds good on paper. We also need action to tackle the disproportionate effect that welfare cuts and cuts to colleges are having on people with disabilities and learning disabilities. Progress has been made, but there is more we can and should be doing to ensure people with learning disabilities have the support and opportunities they need to, to, to a quality of life they deserve. I move the amendment in my name.